To help us understand what can Texas do, Elaine Wood is with us now. She's an immigration attorney at Heyman Woodward Immigration Law Firm. Elaine, based on the arguments today, how's this looking? So as was just mentioned, the district judge in Austin did not immediately rule today at the hearing and we're waiting for his reactions. But what he has said so far is that the issue is centering on Governor Abbott's actions and whether or not it's up to him and allowable to try and stop what Governor Abbott has referred to as an invasion on the southern border. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there might be a don't tread on me or states' rights subtext here. But the stated purpose also is to stop the flow of drug smugglers, stop fentanyl from killing Americans because it's coming across the border. And they point out migrants who want to enter the country can legally turn themselves in at a border point not far away. You want to enter legally, go down the road. You can do it there. Do the feds really believe Texas cannot try to stop deadly drugs from entering their state? I think that the federal government is very much aware that a barrier made of hard plastic and razor wire that stretches for several soccer fields is not going to make much of a dent in the drug industry that's coming from Mexico. I don't think that this situation that's happening with Governor Abbott is more than presenting his uh, authority for Operation Lone Star and trying to show Texas as a, as a state all of its own. Um, if anything, as was mentioned previously, and the CEO of Heyman Woodward, Leo Freitas, has said to me several times to look at the treaties, right, um, and how the use of the river could, in fact, violate Mexico's sovereignty. So let's talk about what happens with international law a little bit and the damage that such a barrier could cause with our relations with Mexico. Mm. But do treaties entitle the flow of deadly drugs over, like if you're violating that or permitting that, not stopping that, does that not change the calculus? People are taking you know, a lot of issue with the razor wires and the buoys and things like that. Uh, but again, the state says, we're trying to stop deadly drugs. We are trying to save our citizens. Why would that be illegal if it yeah it might not stop at 100 percent but just like you have a right to try with let's say clinical drugs that are not yet approved why is it illegal to try to stop it so i think we need to be careful not to conflate the effort of governor abbott to stop unlawful immigration with issues related to drug trade so what Governor Abbott argued is that the Biden administration left him no other option but to create a structure of his own with these buoys, right? So the question of how, if at all, is this related to drugs reminds me of the quick conflation, right, that Trump made saying that my people from Mexico might be having a greater tendency to commit uh, sexual assault, Yeah, but fentanyl's right? coming so over the southern border as well, Ellen. We know that. Right. So the logical conflation that's being made between sort of the buoy stopping unlawful immigration and thinking that that's directly related to the, the drug cartel is not evident in the data that I've reviewed recently. And so I think that it would be wonderful if we could see some data related to how the DOJ's claims that Governor Abbott violated the Rivers and Harbors Act relates to, mm -hmm. in any way, drug trafficking from Mexico. Elaine, we have about 30 seconds left, and I really want to get your take on this. The Supreme Court, um, we talked about Arizona about a decade ago, but the court has also allowed the Biden administration to toughen up rules that migration advocates say are illegal. If Texas does make it to the Supreme Court, as they seem to want to do, do they win? Could Texas win? Um, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals uh, can hear this federal district court. And I suppose at any point, 
we can see what happens based on the evidence presented, but we're still focusing on whether Governor Abbott has the power to overstep federal law. And I think we're waiting for the outcome of that, which typically the U.S. Constitution prevails. Mm -hmm. Treaties, state laws, international law, maritime law, a lot here. Immigration attorney Elaine Wood, thank you for helping us work through some of this. Wonderful. Thank you.